thawing permafrost in the Arctic could release vast carbon deposits and diseases, not to mention what it's going to do when it releases the weight of this ice from the area. Increasing magma input in there and earthquakes. Now, this is what climate state shows us, and the scientists and geologists have told us that in a couple of decades, the North Pole, the Arctic, will be clear of ice. And we have trillions of dollars of oil and gas deposits in that area. There have been studies on the Arctic for years, finding out how the frozen ground, known as the permafrost, changes in the environment. That's getting hotter all the time. We recently had the Arctic, Siberia, Russia oil spill over 20,000 tons because of the fact that the permafrost, as for, uh, for what the, uh, ca the uh, company has claimed, because Russia asked the company to pay for all the damages, the, co the company says, no, it's not our fault. It's uh, global climate change and global warming and the permafrost melting. Therefore, all the infrastructure, all the pipelines, everything is thwarted, as you can see here from the picture of this private home north of Fairbanks, Alaska, is uh, totally tilted because of the permafrost underneath has melted and disappeared. It's as if the ground has disappeared from underneath. So, the samples that have been drilled out in regions that are so remote that they cannot be accessed without a helicopter or a snowmobile leave scientists in no doubt that the thawing of the Earth's permafrost is accelerating. Locally, it's damaging infrastructure and wildlife populations as well. But what's more worrying to the environmental scientists is a vast sink of carbon lying frozen underneath its surface. Permafrost can be seen as a freezer, said Dr. Gross, who heads the Pentacarb project from the Alfred Wegener Institute in Potsdam, Germany. He says you open it and the organic material inside begins to rot. The carbon that is released from putrefaction ends up in the atmosphere, adding to greenhouse gas concentra concentrations and further aggravating global warming. We are facing the possibility of temperatures rising faster than what was quantified in the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC reports, he said. The amount of carbon locked underground could represent twice the amount currently held in the atmosphere, but no one knows how much of the permafrost is likely to thaw. In regions where temperatures are just below freezing point, the upper few yards of the soil all are vulnerable, and then colder ones, deeper and older carbon sinks are thawing around lakes and rapidly eroding coasts. Dr. Gross says we need to know how much carbon is at stake to understand how it will affect the climate. Data series from ground and satellite monitoring now stretch back far enough to identify an acceleration in permafrost thawing. A network of permafrost monitoring stations across the northern hemisphere show that the warming of the permafrost that started about 30 to 40 years ago is continuing, with colder regions warming faster than regions where temperatures are closer to zero degrees Celsius. And we see that in Siberia, it's got record heat. And also with that comes wildfires. Now, Professor Terry Callahan, head of Interact, a network of Arctic observation stations that's working to build capacity for monitoring the European Arctic, said that global collaboration, collaboration has been crucial in advancing understanding. He said 30 years ago, the fall of the Iron Curtain made it possible to bring together for the first time pan-Arctic observations, he said. And today, he coordinates a network of more than 60 research stations across three continents whose work cuts across international borders and scientific disciplines. Dr. Stephen Hagman leads the Terrestrial Hydrology Group at the Max Planck Institute for Meteorology in Germany. His permafrost modeling work supports the EU funding Page 21 project. It's working with computer modelers to evaluate how the permafrost will change due to global warming. He says the response of permafrost to global warming is fantastically complex. To understand it, we need a synergy between remote imaging, field work, and computer models. Experts from a range of disciplines assess the data and offer explanations. Computer modelers incorporate their hypothesis into their algorithms. 
if the simulation fits the data, Dr. Hadman feels a step closer to success. He says, piece by piece, we're making the models more realistic and improving the precision of our predictions. Now, what about the disease, frozen disease? One of them being anthrax in Siberia. And they're rushing to find out where these anthrax uh, colonies are because there's a lot of uh, companies that are interested in going to Siberia to extract oil and gas. And you can imagine people coming back to their families with anthrax. So, frozen diseases. Interaction between Earth scientists and biologists have led to under, uh, groundbreaking results in other areas of permafrost research. The Perma Threat Project is investigating the health hazards of the thawing of carbon that has been frozen for thousands of years. Permafrost contains DNA sequences of diseases from half a million years ago. This is what Ufen Wilken said, Center for Geogenetics at Copenhagen, Denmark. He says, living bacteria today could incorporate these genes and spread pandemics for which present-day organisms have lost immunity. The project has discovered the DNA of viruses as well as diseases, and the risk is that this DNA could combine with the DNA of living bacteria or virus. So far, however, the project has seen no evidence of this happening. His team's biggest breakthrough was identifying the genetic remains of ancient plants and woolly mammoths that have been found in the permafrost, dating back 20,000 years. And also they found a, uh, some kind of a, uh, a wolf or something going back 40,000 years. Anyway, now because these genes can remain intact longer than bones, the results have provided paleontologists with precious clues to migration and extinction events that took place as far back as the Pleistocene epoch. Now, whether through releasing the DNA of frozen diseases or flooding the uh, atmosphere with carbon, the thawing of the permafrost presents a threat that humanity has to solve. Professor Callaghan said the world is at a tipping point. This is the first time in the planet's history that a life form on its surface is capable of understanding or changing its climate. But we are still animals when it comes to changing our own behavior. Our science has evolved rapidly. Now we hope our governments will act on it. This is from the European, in, European Union source climate state. And I'll leave a link below for you. Please leave your comments. I think this is bewildering that the Arctic, the North Pole, is going to be ice free in 10 to 20 years. This is amazing what's happening there. Oil spills and permafrost thaw. And this is just one of many houses north of Fairbanks, Alaska, that has tipped over because there's no more permafrost holding it underneath. This is the permafrost, as you can see. That's what it looks like. It looks like ground on top. All of this underneath is frozen ice for yards down. I don't know how many feet that is. 200, 300 feet down, I have no idea. So you can understand what that means when that melts. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.